Well, I promise to, to make this lively. <laughs> but when you've had politicians speak ahead of you, it's not always easy, particularly when they smell an election so closely. I, I still have four years to go before I, <laughs> I have to worry about an election. But what it is, <laughs> I come from Botswana. In Botswana, the governor of the bank is a lady, and she's also the best lady governor on the continent. The attorney general is a lady. The auditor general is a lady. The commissioner of labor is a lady. Even the Anglican church have just recently ordained a female priest. Yes, it's, I thought it took a while. The Speaker of the National Assembly is a lady. The Director responsible for the Directorate of Corruption and Economic Crime is a lady. And I happen to be the lady responsible for education. Unlike my colleagues, I like quotas in a way, but only in a very temporary manner. I prefer to sneak up on society with my women battalions when they least suspect it. <laughs> and the plan is very simple. We are lucky in Botswana in that the enrollment at schools is 50-50, male and female students. My plan is simple because my intention is to make sure that the girl students are in the sciences as much as their boy counterparts. It is my intention that our first group of researchers are led by female students, and we are on the way to that. Because if we can get it right at education, then I don't need a quota. We will be the 70%. This is why I'm quiet about the quota. In Parliament, I would like a quota. Because, you see, now this is when I'm a politician. You said, <laughs> when it's okay, say it, when it isn't, or is that what you meant? No, this time, quota yes in Parliament, because out of the 57 constituencies, only two are female. Um, two women, myself and another younger woman, I will not say anything about my age because suddenly I feel a lot older than some people. <laughs> but what we are looking at in Botswana is to make sure that education benefits the girl child just as, um, as much as it benefits the boy child. We have serious difficulties with teenage pregnancies. And to counteract that, it is permissible for those students to come back to school after they have had their babies, because if we didn't do that, education would be lost to them permanently. We also have NGOs now running programs for young mothers on skills development. This is mostly the Catholic Church in Botswana. We have distance learning. Botswana has just been recently accorded the SADC region certificate uh, programmer for distance learning. And this is an ideal program where women can be home to look after their children but still get an education so that they can compete. The laws in Botswana have been balanced totally to the point where every single law that assumes that he includes she, we have had rewritten because he does not necessarily include she. That was supposed to be a light moment, but I let it pass. <laughs> and then, <laughs> but then I've had, I'm glad to have a Minister of Labor. And for me, coming from Botswana, a developing country, being in Europe, there is no way I'm going to let a member of the EU Parliament get away without putting a campaign in your head and asking other people, corporations of your magnitude, to play this number for us. We've just had a strike in Botswana. 
I speak about it because we've never had a government strike before. This was the first time. It lasted six weeks. The students, eight weeks actually, the students suffered the most. Students have not been trained for a whole semester because labor laws allow teachers as employees to go on strike as a right they have. We have a law that was passed two years ago declaring education as the right of a child. But as soon as we declared education an essential service, we were challenged that the ILO laws do not describe education as an essential service because essential service, according to the ILO, is defined as laws that relate or functions that relate to life or health. Now, I think that it is normal that the ILO would have done that, considering when the, uh, that definition would have been crafted, probably in the 30s. The UN in those years didn't see rights at all of any form. It was mostly the bib biblical rights that society was concerned about. You should not kill or steal or the usual things. But as years developed and the women sought the vote, rights of women became prime, followed closely by rights of children. And I think it is about time, and I would like to use this opportunity, Irene, to take this conference as the place where we decided that the ILO should declare education as an essential service because without education for anybody, it is a matter of life and death. And therefore, I cannot go back to Botswana without saying this because it is very important for us to do so. And I cannot do it from Botswana alone. It is something that requires minds of worlds ahead of ours to put across in order for the rest of the world to sell. But then in closing, I would like to say my specific topic was education for economic success. I could do that on a domestic basis for Botswana, but I don't think that we have the time for that. What I would rather do is to share four points that I believe the world ought to know if Botswana should have the economic growth it needs to make sure that the girl child gets the education they deserve. And these are, diamonds in Botswana are not blood diamonds. Fact. Because every single road, every single scholarship, every single IRV bot, or every single um, antiviral medication paid for by government is paid for out of earnings made from the diamonds that Botswana sells largely to Europe. And therefore, we would like you to please educate yourselves a bit more about the diamonds of Botswana. We also have human rights issues that are blown, in my view, totally out of proportion because our laws do not support segregation in any form. But we have some NGOs of European origin, particularly in the United Kingdom, something called Survival International. Clearly, none of my friends belong to that group. But they feel, for some reason, that Basara are oppressed. You would feel that if you didn't have enough education about Botswana, its laws, and the rights of people, and the equality that is built into the laws of Botswana. Then comes the ivory under CITES. Whenever we try to sell ivory, we run into a whole lot of difficulty because of poaching and anti-poaching rules. We do this because Botswana holds the largest living population of elephants in the southern hemisphere. We have, of the 300,000 elephants on the continent, about 180,000 are in Botswana. In a fragile environment, where they cannot feed themselves, where they are actually destroying themselves because of the environment that they have destroyed. And what we do is to control that by occasionally releasing certain numbers for hunting and also picking up ivory that may have fallen, out, fallen off those elephants that may be doing so out of natural mortality. All our ivory is processed, marked, and identified by date of location and date of pickup and reason for it being of an elephant, every single piece. And for, for any of the countries that oppose the selling of ivory, in my view, that is because they don't have enough 
knowledge, nor have they educated themselves enough to know that Botswana can afford to do so. But I usually uh, pull fun of the European politicians. I can, I can say this, can't I? Yes. I won't be PI'd, right? No. I, I keep saying that, you know, if, if the diamonds, if our ivory in Botswana was like the diamonds in Botswana and children in Antwerp and Amsterdam and London got jobs processing our diamonds, if that happened with the ivory, we wouldn't have a problem with our ivory. But because it doesn't get processed anywhere outside of Botswana, this is why we have to explain it. But believe me, the processes we use for the diamonds are the same as those we use for the elephants. Last, EU, we sell the best beef in Botswana. You see, this is more or less like a marketing thing. But the reason it has to be is because we cannot have economic growth if the rest of the world has no knowledge about us. And if we do not educate the world about us, then we will not have that economic growth that our young children require. That's the best I can do in 10 minutes. Thank you.